One of the first things you learn in postural restoration is that muscle activation, such as activating a left hamstring, isn't that hard. The hard part about repositioning pelvises and rib cages is inhibition, which means turning something off. So we can activate all day. We're really good at it. Strength trainers, uh, physical therapists, any type of exercise professional, people who work out, we're really good at activating muscles. The problem is we're not as good as inhibiting muscles or turning off overactive muscles. And that's really where the magic of postural restoration works. And that's really what prevents postural restoration from working at the same time. So I remember in the first seminar, the instructor said, activation is easy. Is easy. Inhibition is the show. You have to be able to inhibit the overactive muscles rather than just attempting to turn on the underactive muscles. And usually with each postural restoration exercise, it really should happen at the same time because every position you're being put into inhibits the overactive muscle or is designed to inhibit or turn off the overactive muscle and turn on the underactive muscle, which then repositions the pelvis, the rib cage, and the neck, and then also strengthens the body in that new position. But one thing that can happen is oftentimes the, an exercise will not work because there's not enough inhibition occurring. If it's not a technique issue, it's usually a sensory issue. So sometimes people are just doing the, the technique or the exercise incorrectly. Some of these exercises look simple, but in reality they're very difficult to get correct because everything has to be in three planes of motion and everything has to be very well coordinated and timed with proper breathing. But when all of that is being taken care of properly and yet you're still not getting your test to change or you're just things aren't you're not feeling better or you get some you get some change but it doesn't last. It doesn't last. Quite often what's happening is you're not fully turning off the overactive muscles. Now remember, when you're in the defined left AIC, right BC pattern, and perhaps a neck right TMCC pattern, for the most part, it is the right side of the body that is overactive. Overactive right SCM, overactive right lateral chest wall, uh, overactive right leg muscles, adductor, hamstring, glute max, overactive uh, right QL. So the right side is really overactive and the left side is really underactive. Now you can try to do all the left side exercises you want, but if you can't turn off the overactive right side, it's not going to last on the left side. So one of the things that you can do, and you can do this at home, anyone can do this, is use a homemade orthotic. Uh, it is really, you can use uh, any type of fabric, um, mesh. This is, I don't even know what this is. This is some sort of insole material I bought at a drugstore. You could use paper towel that you fold up. And what you do is you put it underneath the right arch of the person's foot or your own foot. And I'll I'm going to show you why we do that. So when your pelvis is in the left AIC pattern and it's oriented to the right, let's say this is your foot. The pelvis orients to the right and your weight shifts to the right. What's going to happen with the foot is it's usually going to supinate because the weight is taking it over to the right. So if this is a flat foot, this is the ground, this is the flat foot, your right foot will often supinate because again, the weight above it is taking it in that direction. Now, when you lose the right arch, because you're living in that supinated position, so you're fully not, you're never fully getting the right arch down to the ground, metaphorically speaking, your brain forgets that the ground is over here, so it keeps you tied to the right. In one of the postural restoration manuals for impingement and instability seminar, it says this, orthotics do not reposition the foot. 
They alter the ground reaction force vector, which alters the proprioceptive feedback mechanism. Muscles respond by altering the force and timing of their contraction. So the orthotic is not giving support. Orthotic is giving the brain an ability to sense the part of the ground or the part of the foot that it has lost. It's not even aware that it's there. So when your foot is supinated, is, perf is always supinated, it's never going into pronation. Pronation is necessary for the body to relax and expand. And remember, it's the right side of the body that's really constricted. So unless you can get that right foot to pronate fully, which means the arch has to come down to the ground, it may not touch the ground perfectly, but that's why you have sneakers and the sneakers have an arch, is to bring the ground up to the arch. Once you can pronate, the body can then relax on the right side. It'll let go. And you can then push over to the left side. So what the paper towel does, or whatever material, whatever material you're using, it brings the ground to your arch. And all you have to do is feel it. And quite often, just by feeling that right arch, I do this with people all the time. I ask them, do you feel that paper towel? Yes. Retest, their tests have changed. Their body has let go. The right side has inhibited. Simply because your brain didn't know the ground was there. It couldn't do it. It, it, it forgot what, what pronation was on the right side. So you have them feel a paper towel underneath their foot. Boom, pronates, relaxes. The thing is, you the, your body, in a, in a sense, has to rediscover what it's lost. And on the right side, it's often lost the ability to pronate and thus expand and relax. So it stays constricted the whole time. So if you are struggling, if you're doing exercise correctly, which, again, you may not be, but it's, if you're trying and you think you're doing them right, and you're still not feeling it properly, or you're not feeling muscle activation properly, or the results aren't lasting, try putting a paper towel, just fold it up, or any type of material, slip it between your sock and your foot, sense it, and feel if you, and see if you feel the exercises differently. Quite often, people will feel the exercises quite differently because then it allows their body to shift to the left a little bit better. It turns off the right side. The left side can then turn on better. Uh, and it, then it just, it just frees you up on the right side. And that can be a huge game changer for a lot of people. A big part of the healing process is exercise, and in particular, training the movement patterns that you've lost. So if you like this video, could you please like it, share it, subscribe to the channel, do whatever you have to do to, to spread the word so other people can benefit just like I have.